Hey, everybody. Welcome to Wisconsin Icons. I am Bob Dolan. It's great to have you with me. My title sponsor is Pasternak and Zergabel. I know them. I needed them. And uh, I highly recommend them. They are award-winning injury attorneys, and you can find their their assistance at www.injurywisconsin.com. My icon today is uh, a no-brainer. Uh, he's an icon of icons. In fact, if if uh, Wisconsin had a Mount Rushmore, he may well be on it. Hank Aaron, one of the great ball players in baseball history. We know his story, of course, at least the, the bullet points. Uh, born in Mobile, Alabama, uh, an upbringing of, of terrible poverty and hatred and racism. And yet, in his life, Hank Aaron overcame all of it to become a much respected and admired gentleman and a very high regarded baseball player. One of the great baseball players of all time. Uh, my guest today to talk about Hank Aaron, his name is Joe Posnanski. Joe is the author of a book called The Baseball 100, ranking the top 100 baseball players in history. How fun is that? Sounds like something we discuss at, uh, on a bar stool with a cold beer in our hands. Uh, it was a New York Times bestseller. And it was the winner of the Casey Award, Casey as in Casey Stingle, the winner of the Casey Award for the best baseball book of the year. Joe, welcome to Wisconsin Icons. I'm honored to have you. Oh, honored to be here. It's it's always, uh, I'm a big baseball fan, just uh, full disclosure, I've been a big baseball fan since baptism, <laughs> probably. And I know you are too, and I know you're much more of an expert than I am. And all of us in Wisconsin are fascinated with the life and the career, especially of Hank Aaron. And you wrote a book, I've already told the listeners and viewers, you wrote a book called The Baseball 100, which to me, Joe, sounds like perhaps the most fun project ever. Uh, <laughs> where did the, I mean, you must just be a baseball guy, heart and soul. Where did the idea come from? Well, uh, I mean, for The Baseball 100, I think it's probably something that uh, you as a baseball fan, all of us as a baseball fan, we love to talk about who were the greatest players ever, right? We love to argue about who were the greatest players ever. And uh, so for me, it was all about finding the hundred greatest players ever and telling their stories and writing about them. And uh, it was, uh, it was an incredible, incredible experience and, and so much fun and, and really led directly to, to, to my new book, uh, why we love baseball, which of course uh, is very much about uh, Henry Aaron and, and uh, sort of getting a little bit closer to, sort of what you talk about, uh, which is, you know, I've been a baseball fan since baptism. It's it's part of our childhood. It's part of our lives. And and uh, so really sort of breaking down what it is that we love about this great game, the moments that, uh, that we carry with us forever. I can only imagine, Joe, uh, tackling a project like this because there's no definitive answers, of course. It's all a matter of opinion. So I'm wondering what you used when you list one to a hundred. Was it strictly or at least heavily statistics? Did you sometimes go with your gut? I mean, how, how do you get there? Um, you know, when it comes when it comes to the players ranking ranking those, um, you, of course you start with statistics. I mean, that's that's the the easy place to to start. We we have a million lists we could use, right? The you, you can easily list off the the top hundred home run hitters, the top home run hundred win, you know, pitchers and the top hundred strikeouts and top hundred doubles. Like it, it, it's super easy to do it uh, with statistics. But then beyond that, for me, it, it comes down to a lot of other things. It comes down to the impact they had on the game, the impact they had on their teams. Um, how, how much of, a, of an impact did they have on us as fans? You know, I mean, I think, when you talk about a guy like Henry Aaron, uh, you're talking about somebody who played the game with such grace and such modesty. And, and you know, there's that's not to say it's that that that's the, the way to play. Babe Ruth was completely different. Right. It was very, uh, you know, he, he was not modest. He was he was very much, uh, you know, about uh, him, himself and bragging and 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 partying and enjoying life and all of those things. Um, it's not that there's one way. It's just that their their personalities and the way they came to the game and the way they played the game 
uh, was very much a part of of me putting together a, a list of those greatest players. When it comes to the moments, which is what this the, the this one is now, uh, and kind of and looking at the greatest moments, you don't have any stats to sort of to determine whether or not you know where where Henry Aaron's seven hundred fifteenth home run goes against you know Willie Mays' great World Series catch or whatever the case may be. So that was a lot more feel. I, I think for the players, you know, you do have a starting point. Uh, that that you work from uh, for the moments. I think it's a lot more about the emotion of the game. I think, Joe. I on purpose. I have not looked at your list, and <laughs> and, and there's two reasons for that. A, uh, I'm lazy. <laughs> sure, sure. B, I, I wanted to be caught off guard, and I'd right. like, and and I'm hoping, I'm hoping Hank Aaron is is in is in your response. Can you start at five and work your way up to one? Yes, yes, I can, and and there will be one in there that uh, uh, I'm sure will will raise some eyebrows. Actually, there'll be a couple in there that I think will raise some eyebrows. Um, so number five on my list uh, is is Oscar Charleston, uh, who was a uh, a great great player in the Negro Leagues. Uh, my friend Buck O'Neill, my first book was about, uh, used to say that Willie Mays was the greatest major leaguer he ever saw. But the greatest player he ever saw was Oscar Charleston wow. and and uh, really a fascinating story. And I was so proud to put him at number five. One, of course, I believe he, he should be there, if not higher. But two, so many people who bought the book came to me and said, I I never heard of him. Yeah. I, I there, Here's somebody I, I had never heard of. And I, and I was so excited to read a story about about this great player and and have him introduced to me and and uh you know that's very very special number four is henry aaron all right uh, who i don't think i need Thank to tell made it. <laughs> yes yes oh yes number four is henry aaron i don't think i need to say very much about him uh number three is going to be the one that uh that uh is is going to raise the eyebrows my number three player of all time is is uh barry bonds Whoa. And I, I know okay. what that means to a lot of people, um, but he's the greatest player I ever saw live. I, I'm too young to have seen Henry Aaron at his best, Willie Mays at his best, and so on. And and uh, you know, for all of the the controversy that would that would come to him later, uh, he was a player who could do everything as from from the very start. Great fielder, great runner, great home run hitter, great batting average great on base percentage uh he he was he was everything and uh and to me one of the greatest players of all time uh number two uh is babe ruth and and again i probably don't need to say very much about that other than probably to explain why my number one is not babe ruth and my number one uh on the list is willie mays is willie and, mays I'll be yeah proud. and i wrote uh Oh. I wrote about it, you know, in the book. I hope people will will have read it or will read it. Um, but you know, for me, it was uh, uh, it came down to a lot of things. But but for me, Willie Mays is the closest thing we've ever had to a perfect player, and and that's that's not only because he did everything. He you know all five tools. He hit. He ran. He threw. He 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 caught and and all of that uh, hit with power, but. Beyond that, he played the game. He exuded this joy for yeah. baseball. And and you could not – to me, if somebody said, hey, sh show me one player to watch so I can learn to love baseball, you would show them Willie Mays in his prime. So that's why he was number one for me. So, so and, and you referred to this earlier, Joe, uh, as Hank Aaron was perhaps a bit more reserved in his play, a, a quieter personality. Yes. Mays was the opposite. So, so the, their ability may be, you know, uh, splitting hairs, right? But, but Willie gets the edge, or one of the edges, just because of that personality. I, I think so. I mean, look, the, 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 you can certainly go either way, right? I mean, they're they're both were incredible players, and you don't want to split. I mean, Willie Mays was a center fielder. That that's always going to be a little bit of an edge. He was, I think, the greatest center fielder ever. Henry Aaron was a great fielder but i don't know that you would call him the greatest defensive right fielder ever and that with clemente and k-line and some of the others um so it, it's it, again of course it's splitting hairs if if i had, i would have been very proud to put henry aaron number one henry aaron is number one in my new book 
um, uh, for greatest moments. Uh, so I obviously think he is he's one of the not only greatest players, but one of the most important players in the history of baseball. Uh, but Willie Mays was my number one. What all, Joe, did you consider uh, with Hank Aaron? I mean, what what all impressed you about him? Well, everything. I mean, honestly, I mean, he was he was. I, I've I've said this. I wrote this in the piece. I, I think it is an it is a uh, it's an understatement to call him the home run king, which is of course what people called him after he passed Babe Ruth, because I think it reduces him to something that he was much larger than. He he was he was not a home run hitter. Mm. He was he hit home runs, obviously seven hundred and fifty five of them, but. That's not what he. It, to, I I wrote this and and I I don't know that I'm the first to write this, but Henry Aaron's home runs were just doubles that went over the wall. Like <laughs> he hit the ball hard so much, more than anybody else. He right. he has the total bases record and will probably forever. I don't think anybody's ever going to break that record. Uh, Albert Pujols came sort of close, but not really close. I mean, it's it's he he's so much. He, he towers over that list so much because he was a great hitter who just hit line drive after line drive after line drive. Some went over the wall, some went off the wall, some went in the gap, but uh, he was, he was, you know, he and Musial, I think are the two greatest ever at just hitting the ball hard often line drive after line drive after line drive. And yeah. then he was an underappreciated base runner. He was a very good fielder. Like he did other things as well. So I always thought when people just said, oh, there's the home run king, it's sort of like, yes, of course he's the home run king, but he's so much more. I'm glad to hear you say that because one of the things that has always impressed me, amazed me about Hank Aaron is his consistency, and he did everything at the plate. Yes. Because, I mean, he led the league in batting a couple of years. He led the yes, league in RBI. And usually you don't get a batting champion. That's also a home run champion. That's right. And Hank That's did right. it all. And the, and the RBIs, you've mentioned the total bases. Um, I, the the gap that you mentioned in total bases between Hank and number two reminds me of the gap in strikeouts with with uh, Nolan Ryan, and then a massive gap. Yes, between number two. So when you see a player in any sport just totally dominate from best of all to or the the record to the number two guy, and that's it's it's all mind boggling. It is my mind. I mean, but Nolan Ryan, if, if, uh, no, that doesn't get us in Wisconsin, but Nolan Ryan is mind boggling in every way because oh, not yeah. only is, is the gap between him and Randy Johnson uh, in strikeouts, something like 800 strikeouts. I mean, some ridiculous number. Yeah. He's also got almost double the walks of any other pitcher. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's like, I, I wrote this in the, in the, in the, he's of course in the baseball 100. And I wrote this there about him. He's, He's like his own category. It's like you say, oh, who's the greatest pitcher of all time? You wouldn't say Nolan Ryan, but you would say, is who's the pitcher who is completely separate from every other pitcher? You would say it's Nolan Ryan. It's like his own, he's he's his own uh, his own space. I'm gonna have to find some Wisconsin connection, go to Nolan Ryan. <laughs> you should. You should. I'd love to talk about him all day too. Uh, <laughs> Hank Aaron's career was pretty much evenly split between uh Milwaukee Braves. And Atlanta Braves. Yes. Uh, do you think Milwaukee saw the best of Hank or did Atlanta? Well, I think Milwaukee probably saw the best. I think he was still a great player when he went to Atlanta. So they got to see, you know, they of course saw the record there and everything else. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think of the young Henry Aaron with the, you know, lightning quick wrists and everything else that he did. Um, and, and I think Milwaukee was always very special to him. Of course, he finished his uh -huh. career in Milwaukee uh -huh. with the Brewers. And, and you know, that was always, even though he ended up living in Atlanta and, and sort of becoming uh, associated with Atlanta, it was, I think Milwaukee was was him at his very best. I want to, I mean, we could spend another half hour just on the home run record. But I, I wanted, I just want to ask you this question. And please let me explain the reasoning behind the question. Sure. There's off uh, off the top. You might go. You might, you, what what a silly question. Did Hank Aaron? Or how badly did Hank Aaron want the career home run? Was he obsessed by it? And I ask you that because uh, we all know about the hate mail. 
We all know yes. know about the death threats. Uh, yes. Hank Aaron was in the national spotlight. We've already referred to the fact that he was not that type of guy, you know, just very quiet guy. Right. And I recall the home run chase in 1961 with Roger Maris when he was chasing Ruth's single season record. And he hated it. Yes. He hated the chase. He hated the attention. He hated the stress. At one time, he didn't even want to play. His hair was falling out. And I'm right. thinking, multiply that by 10 for Hank Aaron. Because yeah, now you've got, a, you've got an African-American pursuing perhaps the greatest record in all of sports. Yes. Set by a white man. So how badly did Hank Aaron want it? Did he care? Well, he cared a great deal. Uh, did, now you are very much getting into my new book because this is exactly what I spend a lot of time talking about. Um, he what what I end up writing about is, and I, I'll share this with you, uh, even though this is the ending of my book. My number one moment in in the history of baseball is Hank Aaron breaking the record, oh. and the reason. It is because beyond the obvious greatness of the moment is for me, that was the natural progression of what happened when Jackie Robinson crossed the color barrier. Yeah. It was Jackie Robinson led to, of course, the entire change in baseball, but it also led all the way to Henry Aaron breaking the record. And Henry Aaron talked about how painful it was, how awful it was. You probably know. For many, many years, he wouldn't even talk about it after he had broken it. He didn't want to revisit it. He wouldn't do stories about it. He didn't want anything to do with it because it was, and he said this to me very directly on more than one occasion, um, it was among the most painful times of his entire life going through that. But he wanted to break the record because he felt like that's where Jackie Robinson led. You know, Jackie Robinson was gone when he broke the record, but he he would said he would think about Jackie Robinson all the time. And he would think about what it was that this is what Jackie Robinson had fought for. And and by Jackie Robinson, I mean, Jackie Robinson, Larry Doby, uh, you know, Don Newcomb, on and on and on. Monty Irvin, all of those great players who played in the early days uh, of, of integration. And he felt like he owed it to them to break the record. He owed it to them to, to show that anyone can play this game and play it at the very highest level. And so I know he was very proud of breaking the record. I don't think it was a happy memory for him for a very, very long time. I think by the end of his life, I think he, he was able to come to peace with it. Um, but he was not obsessed with it. He did not see himself as a home run record hitter and did not see himself as the guy that, he he didn't compare him. He was not this. Babe Ruth was a very different kind of player, and he never mm -hmm. felt like he was trying to replace Babe Ruth. I, one of my favorite things he used to say all the time is, "I never wanted them to forget Babe Ruth. I just wanted them to remember Hank Aaron." And and I think that's uh, you know very it it speaks to who Henry Aaron was. Those are great stories, Joe. And great clarifications. Um, and thanks for giving away the, the, your your new book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave I gave away a little bit of the ending. I'm, I'm still it's funny buy it, but you gave away the ending. It's <laughs> that's like, funny. I know. I don't like an, you, almost like an author's agony. not supposed you to do just that. Just told right? me who did it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. An author's not supposed to give away the end. <laughs> uh, we talk so much about Hank Aaron on, on the field. I never met the man. It's one of my regrets. I don't know if you did or not, but by all accounts, and when he passed a few years ago, we heard all the stories. Of what a what a kind, gracious gentleman he was off and on the field. I assume you heard the same things. He he was, you know, I I I got to to speak with him on on several occasions. Um, he was pure class in in every possible way. And um he was very special. He was a very special person. And I, I don't I don't know that it's very often that you can say that your heroes sort of live up to your, your, you know, your, your, your highest ideals and your highest dreams. Um, but I've never met a single person who met Henry Aaron, who, who came away without thinking he's even greater than I thought he was. That's very reassuring. Um, you've mentioned your, your current book. What, uh, yes. I know you've done other sports books too. What, what are some of them? 
I've done several. This is yeah. actually my seventh book that's that's out. I, I wrote a book about Buck O'Neill, as I mentioned. I wrote a book about the Reds. I've uh, the seventy five Reds and the the <laughs> machine. Um, I wrote of of the baseball and hundred. I wrote a golf book. I wrote a football book. Uh, I'm writing a football book right now. So I've actually done a lot of different things. But I, I have to tell you, I, I do want to mention one thing. Uh, when I when I found out I was going to be on Wisconsin Icons, um, I really thought you were going to to want me to talk about my 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 hero, my personal hero, and I guess? a Wisconsin a Wisconsin legend, Dwayne Kuyper. I really thought Kuyper. that, that <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed Dwayne Kuyper. <laughs> no, I, because Dwayne Dwayne Kuyper is my hero. Uh, he is he is uh, uh, he leads off my my uh, new book. Uh, with the one home run he hit in his career. So Henry Aaron hit 755, Dwayne <laughs> Kuyper hit one. That's all right. uh, but just, I, I idolized him. I grew up in Cleveland and he was the second baseman for Cleveland and I idolized him and, and uh, we have since uh, become great friends and he, he is absolutely my hero. Fantastic. Wisconsin zone. Very proud. Very good. That's very good. I'm just curious. <laughs> Did any other Milwaukee Braves make your top 100, a Warren Spahn and Eddie Matthews? And did any Milwaukee Brewers make the list? Uh, well, both Warren Spahn and Eddie Matthews made the book. Robin Yount made the book. So, yeah, yes, there's 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 some good Wisconsin representation in there. Joe, it's been a joy. Uh, I mean, we, you know, I, I could talk baseball with someone like you all day long, but I appreciate yeah. your time and a good luck with the new book. And thanks for, so much for your expertise. Absolutely. Thank you. OK, Joe, take care. Bye bye. How fun was that? I mean, you ask any baseball fan, ask any sports fan, and you could have conversations like that literally all day long. And the beautiful part about it is that there's no right answer. I would just, I should have, I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't want to be rude, but I would not have put Barry Bonds number three. I'm not sure Barry Bonds would be on my list anyway, just because of the juice. So I don't buy any of his numbers. Great player, yeah, but a lot of the numbers are tainted. And I've never seen a list before, before Joe's list that had someone ranked above Babe Ruth. So that was uh, that was terrific. Thank you to Joe. Uh, all of his books, by the way, are available on uh, Amazon.com, of course. I thank very much uh, Georgia State University, located in Atlanta, for their access to and their permission for all of uh, Hank Aaron photographs. I love looking at the old, old photos. Thank you to Jamie Knapp and Julie Mines at Penguin Random House Publishing. Uh, they helped me set up the interview with Joe. Uh, if I may, please uh, please see my sponsor page on the website, Wisconsin Icons website. They're, they're helping me share stories. And uh, I'd appreciate their uh, you giving them a look. In, uh, and of course, my title sponsors, Pasternak and Zergabel, award-winning injury attorneys. Town Bank, great, great people, a bank that's spreading across Wisconsin, great leadership. Okay. Uh, thanks for being with me today, and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon again on Wisconsin Icons. <laughs>